Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Janice. Today's video, I'm going to do a review of the Ramoa Classic Cabin Suitcase. So I've owned this, it's right beside me, I'll hold it up. So this is the classic aluminum one in the silver with the black leather handles at the top and the side, and it fits in most overhead compartments. So I wanted to own this for a while before I did a review on it because it is quite expensive. So I've had this almost two and a half years. Needless to say, with what was going on in the world, it didn't get much of a workout during the last year. But I looked back, um, I kind of keep note of all the trips my boyfriend and I take, and this has been on 20 some trips. So I feel like I've used it a decent amount to give it a good review. This was a very nice birthday gift to me. Um, for my boyfriend, but I was planning on buying this for myself, so I, I would have bought it regardless. So right now this suitcase retails for 1400 Canadian dollars, yikes, plus tax. When he purchased this in 2018, I looked at the receipt, it was $1,250, so it's went up $150 since then, which is quite a bit for a suitcase. I mean, you can get a very nice decent suitcase for $150. So in 2016, LVMH did acquire Romoa. So I feel like the price has been going up since then. Also too, they've done a lot of collabs with different brands. Um, one time a few years ago when I was in the store, I saw this Fendi collab. I absolutely loved it, but it was a ridiculous price. But if I had all the money in the world, I really, really liked that one. Also too, I don't know, maybe within this last year, um, the cost of some goods, supply chain have put the price up. I'm not really sure. So let's just get right to the chase. Is this worth $1,400 Canadian plus tax? Absolutely not. You don't need to watch this video to know that a suitcase is not worth that much money. Um, I'm gonna relate it though to a Chanel purse. Is a Chanel purse worth five or $6,000? Absolutely not. You can get a very nice leather handbag for a hundred and something dollars. You're paying for the brand name. Yes, it is you know, pretty decent quality, not all of the time, but I think a lot of times when we spend a lot of money on something, we're really hoping it's going to be amazing quality, last a lifetime, it's going to be way better than a lot of cheaper things, but a lot of the times it's just not. A lot of time you're paying for the brand. Now, do I really like this suitcase? Yes, I absolutely love it. I've always wanted to invest in a nice carry-on suitcase for myself. I've never had a nice one. My last one I actually gave to my grandma, so I was without a suitcase at all. And my boyfriend and I, our thing that we really enjoy doing together is traveling. And I know we will always be like that. And that's just what we like to spend our money on. I'd personally rather live in a smaller place and be able to travel more. That's kind of how I justify spending money on something like this or a, a piece of clothing or an accessory that I know I will get a lot of use out of. So I'll tell you a little bit about this suitcase. So it is made from aluminum alloy. It has handmade leather handles. So it fits most airline overhead compartments. It is the perfect size for a trip. I would say that's two to three days in length. So this one is designed and engineered in Germany. So it comes with a black leather luggage tag, the one that I got, and it also comes with a five year warranty when you register your product online. So the height of the suitcase is 21.7 inches tall by 15.8 inches wide, and it's 9.1 inches deep. And the weight is 9.5 pounds. It has TSA approved locks on it, has a flex divider in the middle, multi wheel system, and a telescopic handle. So let's go over the pros and cons of this suitcase. This is all my opinion. So the wheels on this suitcase are absolutely amazing. By far the best suitcase I've ever had. You can just gently push the suitcase when it's like packed full and it glides so easily. We have taken this, you know, Europe, Asia, the States, Canada. Um, I've taken this up and down stairs over rocks, cobblestone, um, every type of flooring imaginable, carpet. It glides beautifully. It is amazing. So another pro, this company has been around since 1898 and it's really well known for the classic vertical lines in the suitcase. To me, this suitcase looks timeless. It's very classic. It just reminds me of an airplane. I really like that my boyfriend got the one with the black leather handles. I really, really like this one out of all of them. You would be surprised how many people have complimented me on the plane um, when they see this suitcase. It really, really does look quite smart. So for myself, I don't mind spending more money on a carry-on because I know this is going to last me a lifetime. I'm somebody, whenever I get home from a trip, I wipe the suitcase down, I clean the wheels off, I put it back in its dust bag. I really take good care of things. So for me, over my lifetime, cost per use, it's going to be quite low. I'm really confident in that. Now, would I pay this much money for something that I'm going to check in and it's going to get all dinged up? 
Personally, I wouldn't. I'm going to show you one that we got in China when we were there in Shanghai, just at um, one of those underground markets. And it looks similar to our Ramoa suitcase. And I believe it was 50 or 75 Canadian dollars. It's not as good, but it's pretty good for the price. So I'll show that to you later. Something else I wanted to note is I watched another lady's video and she had um, the bigger version of this and she had the one with the leather handles. And unfortunately from the airlines putting those sticky tags around the handle, the leather got all sticky and she couldn't get the residue off. And she just said it's very annoying because anytime she went to lift up the suitcase, it was very sticky. So I'm really glad that hasn't happened to my suitcase. I would be really quite upset if that did happen. Um, I think in the um, 20 some trips this has been on that I did check it a couple times when we were in China. We had smaller flights and it is dinged up slightly, but not too bad. I think another advantage of this is if you don't mind it getting dinged up, it's kind of like a pair of Converse shoes. Converse shoes to me look really good if they're brand new and they also look good if they're really worn. I just think it just adds character to this, but I will try to take very good care of this for as long as possible but it does look really cool if you add stickers and you know it has dings i don't i don't know i really like that the leather handles are really nice to grip i really like it another cool thing is that you can make it your own by customizing the color of the handles and the tag as well as the wheels so even if you wanted to leave the handles black but just change the color of the wheels or if there's multiple people in your family and you want to color code them, I thought that's a really cool plus of this. And I really like this cactus green color. Another good thing is the five-year warranty. So you just register it online. Um, and also this does hold its value very well. Like I said, it went up $150 in the past just, you know, few, two or three years. So I think on the resale market, if you ever get sick of it, you can get a lot of your money back. And it's just a very timeless design. So now let's go over the disadvantages. So the price is obviously a huge disadvantage. Um, people have said, you know, that away luggage, it's very good and it's a lot cheaper. It's not the lightest thing in the world. Personally, I don't find it to feel too heavy, but it does almost weigh 10 pounds. Sometimes the handle, when I overload this, it does get a little bit stuck, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Now this has only happened when I have absolutely rammed the suitcase full, which you're not supposed to do, but it is something I did want to mention. The Velcro on the divider on the inside could be a disadvantage. I did notice this, so I'm very careful with packing, just so the Velcro doesn't get caught on any knitwear. Um, a disadvantage could be that the, the handle might get sticky if there's a tag around it. And another disadvantage is it's not expandable, but I mean, most suitcases like this are not, so I wasn't obviously expecting that. So let's do a close up. So here it is in its dust bag. I actually do keep it in this um, just because I find it does get a little bit dusty if it's months before you travel again. And there's the little care booklet. The wheels on this are absolutely amazing, you guys. You can just easily do that. It will keep spinning. Um, my boyfriend has traveled a lot, has tons of different suitcases over the years, and he agrees. This is the best wheels he's ever seen on a suitcase. Um, I'll show you from the front here. So I just think it looks absolutely beautiful. I really like the leather. I decided to put my leather tag here on the side. I didn't really like it up top. So the telescopic handle basically has three different levels it can sit at. So the handle does click down into place. And then I'll show you. It has a mid setting so you can watch. So it's going to lock there at the midpoint and then all the way up. I usually just keep it all the way up and you can easily sling a tote bag or your purse over top, which is great. Like I said, sometimes when I have overpacked a suitcase really full, it takes a little bit of coaxing the handle up all the way because I feel like there's some pressure put on it down there, but not the end of the world. And that has never happened when my suitcase is just filled normally. It's only when I've really, really packed it. I really, really like the feel of the leather. It's just such a comfy handle, very easy to grip. I like that it has it on the side as well. You can see after a decent amount of flights, that's pretty much as much as it's got dinged up. So just a little bit at the corners. Um, you know, there might be the odd little chip, but for the most part, it looks really, really good still.
Okay, let's look inside. So here's the locking system and it does have the TSA approved lock. So if somebody from the airport does have to get into your suitcase, they can just put the key in there. They don't actually have to know the code to get in, which is great. So for those of you that have never had a suitcase like this, um, the suitcase will not open if you don't have the right sequence of numbers in there. So see, I'm pushing the button out. This will not pop open. Um, and just be mindful, if you do plan to share this suitcase with some family members, make sure they know the code because something happened. I think my boyfriend went to use this. I was away for the weekend and I had sent the code and then he couldn't get into it. He couldn't use this suitcase. So just be mindful of that. Maybe keep the passcode down. Down, um, mark down in your phone or somewhere safe. So once you have your code programmed on both sides, you simply slide your thumb on the button like that and it pops open. So in the suitcase, it comes with these two dividers, which you can take out. I will warn you, um, this is a Velcro material. So this is rubbery. This isn't your classic Velcro. They kind of have their own version of it. Just be careful if you do have any knitwear or anything like that, something very delicate, you don't want this to accidentally touch it and pull it. I've always been very, very careful to line the Velcro up but you can always use those little packing cubes, but just be mindful of that if you have something that you're really concerned with. So you can take this out. So sometimes when I'm packing, I just put, you know, underwear, bras, socks, jewelry, what have you, accessories in those little things. Um, surprisingly, you can fit a lot. I think the longest I've went away with this was four days, but it worked really well. So this is what I was saying. Um, sometimes when I've overpacked it and I've put really heavy things on here, the handle has been a little bit harder to pull up all the way. But if you don't overpack it, that definitely won't happen. I kind of like that there's the grooves there from the handle, just because sometimes you put things and it just prevents it from sliding around. Um, something you just might want to take note of is if you're someone that typically packs a lot of little things this doesn't go right to the edges something that would have been nice if they would have made one side completely zippered that would have been better for me this has never been an issue but just be mindful of that but again you can always use the packing cubes or little bags um, yeah, and this side is essentially the same, but again, just be careful of the Velcro, but that goes for any brand that has this type of suitcase because it is quite strong. I have seen some people over time that had travel a lot, say the Velcro kind of wears out. I'm sure you can buy um, different inserts for it. And it's like a nice silky lining, which is really nice. So that part is very good for delicate wear. And when you get it, it comes with this little care booklet and the warranty, and then you can go online. Um, I believe it comes with a two-year manufacturer's warranty, and you can go online for an additional five-year warranty. Um, so that's quite good. And then I just keep the receipt in there and the luggage tag was in there. Also just comes with a few stickers if you're someone, if you like to put that stuff on your suitcase. So this is our cheapy suitcase that we got in Shanghai. Um, it does look like a Ramoa suitcase, but it's not a knockoff. It doesn't say Ramoa anywhere. It's just made to kind of look like that. Um, the handle on this is pretty similar. Um, it's definitely a little bo bit more loose, definitely. And to be honest, it doesn't really slide up that well either. Something I will say, um, my boyfriend actually did this. He was taking something to his mom's and in the garage, this tipped over and look at the big dent. So it didn't take very much force for the big dent to happen. Um, definitely comparing the two, the wheels on this, the wheels on this are not bad, but they're nowhere as good as that, nowhere as good. But I believe this was only maybe 50 or $75 at a cheap um, market in Shanghai. So um, we just got this when we were there because I think something happened with our suitcase. So this definitely is not bad for the price at all. I don't know, I find this one really heavy. So this is not ideal. When this breaks, we might invest in a better one but I just kind of wanted to show you. Um, if you don't care about brand, to be honest, they look pretty similar. So definitely this one is a lot better quality, but if you're not someone, you don't care about brand names, you don't really travel that much, you don't care if it lasts that long, um, is this worth 14 times the price of that? I don't know. 
So in closing, would I buy this again? For a carry-on, yes, I would, because I really like it. It makes me happy when I travel with it. Like I said, the wheels alone, I love it. And I really think I will have this for life. Now, if I was somebody that only took maybe a trip once every couple of years, it's not really worth it. If I had all the money in the world and I were to buy a Ramoa that I check in, I would definitely get one with a plastic handle just so it doesn't get sticky from the tags. Also in the down bar, if you're wondering how to program the lock for the first time, I'm going to link a video that helped me.